Is property actually a passive investment? Hi guys, uh, my name is Nick Ellsmore and today I'm going to talk about whether property really is a passive investment. So, first of all, just before we start, what other ways can we earn money? So, we could buy stocks and shares. So we could put £10,000 into stocks. We could choose the stock or we could go into a managed uh, fund that a stockbroker looks after. But either way, that probably is, by definition, a truly passive investment. We buy it, we sit on it, we watch them go up or down, and there's not a great deal we can do. Yes, we could choose to take the money back out and reinvest it in another stock, but pretty much it's a, there's not a lot we can do. Same as crypto. We could put 10,000 into crypto. It'll be a bit more of a roller coaster ride than if we were investing in the stock market, but similarly, we can't really do much to it. It's a passive investment, okay? And we're hoping it's gonna go up. Property, on the other hand, we can put 10,000 pound into property, and again, I know you're all going to say to me, Nick, you can't buy a property for £10,000, but I'm just being hypothetical here. So whatever money we put into property, is that really a passive investment? Well, it all depends how you structure and set up your property business. So I would recommend that you set your property business up for a completely passive investment. My property business is set up so that I can go away for weeks, months, or even years at a time. If I go on holiday, my business still runs. If I go away for months at a time, my property still runs. If I retire, my property still runs. So I have got my business where it truly is a passive investment for me. But that didn't come easy. You don't just buy a property and all of a sudden it becomes passive. But there are a few things that you can do in order to help you make it more passive. So if we look at the basics of what does this property business entail? So the first is you've got the physical part of the business. So this is where we've got the property, the property itself. So things, things will go wrong with that property. So things will break. So therefore somebody will get a phone call for property repairs. So I'm just going to put over here the, I'm just going to put here what things need, need to be rectified, fixed, addressing, whatever you want to call it. So we've got the physical part of it, okay? Something's gone wrong with it, um, drains blocked, fence blown over, roof tile blown off in high winds. That's the physical aspect of the property. We've then got the, uh, the legislative, if you like, legislation. So we've got things like uh, insurance. So we need to get the property insured. We need to, if it's a HMO, we need to be licensed. The third type, this is where you're gonna get phone calls from the tenants. So there's gonna be calls. You need to find a tenant. So at the beginning, of the tenancy, you need to find someone, or when they vacate and it's empty, you need to find the next tenant, so you need to find. So there's all sorts of things that go around that, okay? Once they're in, you've got all of the, um, all of the interaction with the tenant. As I said there, you're gonna get phone calls, they're gonna be calling up saying things have gone wrong with the property. Uh, when they leave, uh, you're gonna need to do check-ins, check-outs, all sorts of different things. But the good news is, that somebody will do all this for you. So you could give, you could give the tenant aspect of it, managing the property to a, a letting agent. So typically they would charge you between 10 to 12% per month of the rental income. And they will manage all that for you, okay? So if a tenant leaves, they'll find you a new tenant. They'll do referencing, they'll do credit checks, they'll look at their bank statements, they'll check that the tenant is suitable. They'll also take phone calls for physical problems with the property. So if there's a gas leak or a, well, hopefully there's not a gas leak, sorry. 
if there is a, a block drain or you know fence blown over, they'll take all those problems uh, away for you. Uh, and they'll handle them. Uh, these, that's probably something you need to do yourself. Okay, uh, you need to make sure it's insured. You need to make sure if it's if it's uh, HMO, it's got the correct licensing, and so on and so forth. So that's something you're going to want to do yourself. And you're also going to probably have to pay the tenant, uh, sorry, sorry, pay the agent um, manually unless you opt for them to take the rent and then take their fee out and then give you the rent. Okay, but either way, you're probably going to have to do this. So coming back to the original question of this video is, is property truly passive? It can be fairly passive, but there is still a little bit of work to do. But you might say, well, Nick, why is it totally passive for you? Well, it's passive for me because I'm at the stage where I have staff that handle all of this in-house, so I don't get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the portfolio. So for me, it truly is passive because I have people that work in those roles and look after the property for me. But if you're just starting out or you've got a few properties and it doesn't warrant you having your own member of staff, uh, then you can certainly make it 95% passive, let's say. And then all you need to do is this bit in the middle and just authorise payments for the physical aspect of it. So the agent might call you up and say that, uh, you know, we've got um, a leak in pipe. It's going to cost £70 to repair. Can we go ahead? Yes or no? So in answer to your questions, yes, I think it, you can uh, class property as a passive investment with minimum input from you. Now, if you're gonna do refurbs and flips, that's a totally different kettle of fish. If you're gonna do serviced accommodation and uh, rent to rent, totally different kettle of fish. But if we're just talking about single biter lets or even multi lets, HMOs, then using systems and things in place, it can be passive. So a bit of a short video today, guys, but I hope that was useful. Don't forget, as always, to hit the like and the subscribe button and the notification bell. And um, if you want some free training, a 30-minute free training on how you can build up a small portfolio of properties in the next three years, then drop me an email or a DM. My email is in the About section, but what I will say is this particular training, I don't want to waste anyone's time, you do need 30 to 40,000 pound available in order to get started with the training that I'm going to show you. I'm not charging you for the training, but what I'm saying is that the what I'm teaching on that training does need a little bit of money to get started. So it's not no money down or anything like that. But if you want access to that, drop me a DM or an email and I'll gladly give you the access. Okay, guys, that's all for today. And uh, I say hit the buttons, hit the bells, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.